In this video, we're going to learn about tidy data. And tidy data is basically data that's well structured to make it easy to work with on a computer. And that means that if you collect your data in a tidy way, it'll make it much easier to analyze later on. And we'll look at this by talking through some basic rules for tidy data and looking at examples of data that aren't tidy and how we could make them more tidy and therefore make our lives easier in the future. And the first set of rules that we're going to talk about can be roughly summarized as make it a rectangle. And the idea is that we want data that only has rows and columns, no additional structure, and we want to have one column and only one column for each type of information, and one row and only one row for each observation. And so here are a couple of examples where the data is not perfectly tidy. And so these are data where we have information on the plot that we surveyed, uh, the species of the individuals that we looked at, and the count of how many individuals there were. And so these are the counts. So we've got plot listed down here in a column. That looks good. But now we have a combination of a top level header for species and then a lower level header for different species and then their counts. So this isn't a rectangle, right? It's kind of bumped out at the top. And this is difficult uh, for computers to work with. Here's a slightly better version, but it's still not truly tidy, uh, where we've got plot in one column, and then the counts of individuals for species A in another, and the counts of individuals for species B in a third. And the thing that's not tidy about this uh, is that we have more than one column for a single type of information, which is the count of the number of individuals. And as a result, we also really have one row that represents multiple observations. So this is an, ob an observation here is really a count of the number of individuals of a species. And so now we actually have two observations on this line. And that also means we have information tucked in the column headers that's going to be more difficult to work with on a computer, the species A and B designations. So what would a good version of this look like? It would look like this. So now we have a single column uh, that has plot, that's still the same, but now instead of spreading species out across different columns, we have a column that tells us which species we've observed, and then we have the count or abundance of that species uh, in a third column. And so uh, we've got one type of information in each column, plot number, species identifier, count, and one row for each observation, one row for each plot, species, and count combination. The second rule uh, that we're going to look at uh, is one cell, one value. And so the idea is we only want to have one piece of information contained in each cell. And so here's an example where we have two pieces of information contained in each cell. We've got some data on masses, and they're in different units. And so in the first row, we've said they're 26 grams, that's this mass, and then 0 0.2 kilograms is the second mass. And as humans, we can readily sort of think about that, but for the computer, this is now one piece of information squished together, and it's harder to work with. And so a good example of what this would look like is having the units split out separately from the masses. And so we would actually have two columns here, uh, one with the actual numeric masses and another with the units. And this will make doing calculations later easier because we only have one value or one piece of information in each cell. The next set of rules is designed to avoid confusing the computer. Uh, and the first rule uh, is to avoid spaces in names. So here in our headers, we have a space between min and temp. Spaces in computing are typically used to separate values from one another, uh, separate commands from one another, and so spaces can cause issues. 
Uh, the second rule is to not use anything that's strictly visual uh, to communicate information. So like in this min temperature data, if we had a calibration error, we've highlighted the cell that had a calibration error, and so we've used that to indicate data that might be bad. Uh, but reading things like the color of a cell, or whether the text is bold or italicized in some way, is really difficult for the computer. Uh, it is feasible, but you don't want to have to do it, trust me. Uh, and so we want to avoid any sort of visual indication of information in the data. We also want to avoid the use of some special characters. So things like asterisks and at signs and dollar signs and carrots are used by programming languages to convey particular types of information. And so including them in our data can make it more difficult to work with. And so uh, in this example, uh, using an asterisk instead of uh, the color over here uh, isn't a tidy choice uh, because this asterisk could mess with the computer. We've also, in both of these cases, violated the rule of having only one piece of information in each cell, right? Because we've included information that's both the number and the fact that there may be an issue with the data. So what's a good version of this look like? A good version of this looks like this. First of all, we've gotten rid of the space between min and temp, and we've replaced it with an underscore. And that's a good way to provide information on there being two words without having a space between them. Uh, you can also, if you prefer, use uh, a format like camel case, so we could say min temp, where we capitalize the beginning of each word. Those would both be uh, good choices. And then we have our temperatures in one column, and the way we've stored that other information that we had was to create a separate column for calibration error, and it is zero when there's no calibration error, and we have the value of one if there is a calibration error. And that allows us to easily filter our data later on to throw out data with calibration errors that we might not want to analyze. The next set of rules is to be clear and be consistent. And this includes a variety of things, including using meaningful names. They should be short, but meaningful and easy to understand from reading them. Being consistent in the use of things like names, abbreviations, capitalizations, always writing things in exactly the same way everywhere in your data. Using good null values uh, that clearly indicate uh, that something is null, and we'll generally focus on the use of NA as a null value during this class. Uh, and finally, writing dates in a consistent way that's easy to analyze. Uh, and one version of that uh, is the four-digit year, a dash, the two-digit month, a dash, and then the two-digit day or you could separate those year, month, and day out into separate columns. So let's look at some example, an example where the data is not particularly tidy here. The first thing uh, that's wrong is our headers. We can kind of infer that D is supposed to be date, S is supposed to be species, and A is supposed to be, well, I'm not entirely sure, uh, maybe abundance, uh, but it could be something else, so it's difficult to say. Here's a tidier version of that data. First, we've uh, made the column names more descriptive. So date, species, abundance, those are both short, but easy to understand. The dates are then all stored in a consistent format. And this is the standard, the ISO standard for how you do this, which is year, hyphen, month, hyphen, day. We made the species names consistent as well, so everything is capitalized in exactly the same way. Uh, and we've used NA in place of other null values. The next rule is to use separate tables for distinct categories of data. So just like we only want one value in each cell, 
and we only want one observation in each row, we also only want one general category of data in each table. And the reason for that is that it allows us to avoid large amounts of duplication that can be difficult if we need to go back and change something later. And so here's an example of a not particularly tidy single table version of a data set. It looks great in all the other ways that we've described so far. Uh, we've got a column for the family, a column for the genus, and a column for the species. And then we have a column with information on the plot on which that species was captured and a column on how many individuals of that species there were. And what we can see is if we look, uh, we have these large chunks of totally duplicated information, right? This is a single species, it's Dipodomys spectabilis, and so it's always going to have uh, the same family and genus to match up uh, with this species name. And the same thing here again uh, for Dipodomys ordii. So a two-table version of this data set that's considered to be tidier would look like this. We have one table that has the category of data, which is these individual observations, so the counts of each species on each plot. But it, instead of having the full taxonomic information, we replace that with a single column, which is a species ID. And a, a common way to do that is with two characters uh, of the genus followed by two characters of the species. And so we have now a single value, DISP for Dipodomys spectabilis, along with the plot and abundance information. To still store that taxonomic information and allow us to link back to it for our analyses, we then have a separate table where we store the species ID and how it is linked to the information on taxonomy. And so this species ID has this family, this genus, and this species. Uh, and in a couple of weeks, we'll learn how to put all of this information back together when we need to for analysis. One important thing to note here is that while I've put these two tables in the same spreadsheet so that I can show it to you visually, uh, we would want these to be in separate spreadsheets uh, or in separate files so that we would follow the keep it a rectangle rule because right now it's two rectangles and we only want one rectangle. And so that's a brief introduction to tidy data. We want to make it a rectangle, avoid confusing the computer, be clear and consistent in how we name things and indicate null values, use one table for each category of data, and we'll be in much better shape when it comes time uh, to do our analyses. The dates. The dates all got converted by Excel into the wrong format. Gone!